What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another YouTube video. So today I'm going to be building an enclosure for my sense cap. This is going to be going outside. If you guys have seen my previous videos, you can see that I have it actually mounted on a massive paint stick, which I will actually be upgrading. So I might make this a two part series or maybe even three parts. The first of which is going to be building this box out, which is why you guys are watching this now. And as for uh, parts list, I'm going to have all of the things that I use in the description below, zip ties and everything that's inside this box, as well as the sense cap. But I'm sure if you guys are watching this video, you already have a sense cap. Now this should work for the sense cap and the rack device because they are charged with USB-C. I'm not sure if this will work for, I don't think Bobcat uses USB-C. So any device that uses USB-C and ethernet, you can pretty much do this whole setup with as long as it uses the five amps and they should all be the same because they use Raspberry Pis. So as for cabling, this is LMR 400 cable from MPD Digital. I believe this is eight feet. Currently, right now I have 25 feet. And as you guys know, that is way too much. So enough of me talking, let's open this thing up. So it's got two clips here and this box is what I'm going to be using. Obviously you guys know this is going to be in the description below. It's a really cool box. So. I'm gonna see how this is all going to work. Now, the first thing you're gonna need, and this is in no particular order, but you're going to need a PoE splitter. So we're gonna be powering this over ethernet. That way there's only one cord going into the box and it's gonna come in through the bottom here. And I have the adapters for that and I'll show in a second. But when you want to power over, power over ethernet, you need to have this dual split. So that is providing power to the actual power port and it's providing an ethernet connection so that you have service to your box. So this comes in a pack of two. I recommend getting that one because you never know if this one works out really well for you, you're already going to have the second one ready. So that's just something to consider is to get the two pack. Now, next up is the TP-Link PoE injector. So this takes your standard ethernet cable, whether it be Cat5 all the way up to Cat8, it goes in here, this plugs into power. So this is the only thing that's actually going to have to be plugged in and then it provides a cable. I believe it goes up to a hundred feet of PoE cable. So you can plug your standard cable and this is where you're going to be needing two different cables. So I have my initial, I believe it's 40 or 30 feet. I think it might even be 50 feet from where my router is located up to where this is going to be. And then from that point, I have this cable, which is going to be in the description below. This is RJ45. I bought black because black has a UV resistant coating. Other colors such as white and blue will actually degrade and fall apart in the coating. Thank you guys from the crypto lab for letting me know that. Wasn't too sure about that stuff. So yeah, this is a fingerprint magnet, but this is what you're going to need. Now you don't have to get this particular one. If you find one that's cheaper, go ahead and get that. But I've had really good luck with TP-Link. I've used them for wireless adapters for my mining rigs, as well as network switches. So that's a really good option. And then this is the power brick that comes with the TP-Link. It is pretty small. I mean, it's, you know, it gets the job done. As well as the TP-Link, it does come with this cable. So if you guys do want to just use this one, if you're closer to the box, but I'm going to be using the, I believe it is, I'm going to be using the 30 feet black cable because that is going to give me the distance I need not have to worry about getting any electronics wet or whatnot. This is probably the coolest part. Uh, these are really, really cool. This is an RJ45 connection. So let me just unscrew this so you guys can see it. I found out about these from someone else on YouTube who was making a video building an enclosure and it comes with a cap and this, this little key will kind of get stuck. But on both ends, it has a ethernet female port so that you can connect it and not have to worry about water getting in the box at all. So all you have to do is drill the hole, put this in, and on both sides, oh, it, oop, it doesn't screw off there. Sorry about that. This is just so you can tighten the cable down. It screws, it unscrews here. And this part, this part goes, goes like this. So it butts up against the case, and that could be completely wrong. It goes one or the other way, uh, but we will figure that out. So just wanted to show you guys this. It's really cool, both sides, and this will keep the water out. Next is these cables. Now, they, the only way you can get these is you have to buy them in a big batch. 
Now this is going to be the connection. As you can see, when I close it, it tightens the hole. Oh, got to unscrew it here. And this is going to go up against the top, and that's going to be what the cable comes out of. So I'm not sure if that will fit. I might have to run it all the way through this way in order to get it to work. Not a big deal. Um, so there's, you know, I think they come in a bag of 10. So you have to do that. And these come in a bag of two. Once again, I think it's a good idea that they do come in a uh, pack because if you do plan on building out another box, you can do that and you have the parts. Now this is the final piece besides the box. This is a mount and it comes with I think it's two um, circular, uh, I forget what these are called, <laughs> clamp, clamp rings or whatever. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if this is actually going to work for my case. Now, this doesn't come with any mounting hardware, but my plan is to use this injected, mold, injected molded hole, use that as the center point to line it up, and then I can mount it. I don't have any of the O-rings to like make this watertight, so I'm going to have to get those. Not a big deal. And then finally, there is the box. So in here, there is this grate, and this grate is screwed in, so there is a little bit of a gap underneath. I'm gonna, that was loud. I'm going to be using this towards my advantage because I can put the sense cap in here. Look at that. It fits perfectly. Oh, I can put it in like this. I mean, it really doesn't matter which way I'm going to do it. I think I'm gonna put it in like this just because then it will be a direct cable outage. All right, so now that I've got this all figured out, I do realize that I am going to need this cable just so I can plug it into that little extension once it's actually inside. So this cable does come in handy actually, but if you would like to get a smaller cable, I'm sure you can get them really, really cheap. So next I am going to be drilling the holes. Now, I was considering for a little bit, and that's why I took a little bit of a break if you saw there was a cut in the video. I was considering of putting both of these ports like at the bottom here, so that way there's no possibility of water dripping in from the top and damaging the device. But I think I'm just going to go with my original plan, which was going to have one up here and one down here. I'm going to have the Ethernet cable down here. This just is because the Ethernet cable is longer, and I don't have a lot of room to play with this eight foot cable even though it is eight feet i'm not sure how much room, room i'm going to have once i actually get it up there because i want to figure out where i'm actually going to mount the box so it depends on where the box will fit so the first thing uh i gotta do is i gotta trace out these holes now this is pretty easy you can just get a sharpie which i happen to have right here and let's hope that i don't mess up i guess i should use the the good end of the sharpie here Let's take the sense cup out of here. I guess we want it to kind of be in line. So I'm going to put it right about here. All right, I am back. I did finish drilling the holes. You can see there's one here and one here. Now, I did make a slight mistake. So I want to just inform you guys on what to do and what not to do. The correct uh, size you need is 7 eighths. So I drilled this one accidentally with a 5 sixth, I believe, something like that. Maybe 5 eighths. I forget what it was. It was one too small, and I ended up having to try and drill the 7 8th, and because I was using spade bits, if you guys don't know what they are, it's got like a point, and then it goes and it spins in a circle. Uh, <clears throat> because I tried to go up on a notch, it ended up like messing this up. So I will have to like silicone gasket, uh, I'll something, some sort of gasket just as an extra protection. Now, this was supposed to be the spot where this one was going which would be facing upwards but now i'm going to have this facing downwards so basically my whole box is going to be flipped around because this hole came out perfectly so i don't have to worry so much as water getting into this one so i'm going to be having this one up top which means i'm going to be having the sense cap upside down not a big deal it'll still function as intended i think it might actually even be better because the fan is going to be blowing this way and giving more space uh, for it to breathe but that is something that i'll just find out in the future so you guys can also see i did take out this little crate here that's because a couple reasons first i want to zip tie my sense cap onto this board as well as i need to drill the hole for the mount which i have all of these gaskets so that i can actually insulate the back i got this whole box from home depot but i will find a solution on amazon for you guys so you guys can order it all at once. I am rocking this 
style screw. It's an M7. One is the thread and it is 16 millimeters long. So these are going to go in here like that and then I'm going to screw them on. So I'm going to drill these holes out off camera. You guys probably already know how to drill holes. It's not very difficult. All right, I got the four screws uh, drilled out and four, four holes, and now I have some gaskets from this box, which is awesome. Uh, they are number five O-ring, which is, uh, it's like three eighths outside diameter. Inside diameter is a quarter of an inch. And yeah, so this is working out really well. Now I'm gonna also put one on the other side so that they're double uh, secure just for safekeeping. It doesn't hurt to always just be extra cautious. I got this piece put on, this is tightened. There is no water getting in this little crack. And with this bottom part, I did sand it down a little. And since it is these, I'm not too concerned. Also uh, to my judgment it looks like this is going to have to go this way uh, believe it or not and then this is going to screw on from the bottom so i think i might be in the clear as for waterproofing because this gasket is going to work and secure it and since i am installing this i might as well get the ethernet cable hooked up in here so what i'm going to be needing is to take this basically and there is a rubber gasket on the inside it looks like this and this opens and wraps around the cord so I can do that now and then it will ensure that the, the cord is securely in place. So it looks like I'm going to have to slide this like that. Now I can put this back on, plug this in like so and bring this up to the spot where it needs to connect so you guys can see it right here. Screw this on. So now that, that is ready, I can pretty much move forward with getting the sense cap and everything all lined up. Since I'm going to be putting it upside down now, so it works like this, I need to zip tie it accordingly onto here. Sense cap is secured. This thing isn't going anywhere. This is actually really, really tight on here. Uh, you just saw it was moving a little bit, but I'm not too concerned. I'm not going to be like throwing this box on the ground or anything. This is going to be just hanging for a long time. So I don't have to worry about it like going anywhere, like I said. So the sense cap is secured. I'm just gonna trim these little uh, uh, pieces off so I don't cut myself um, in the process of doing anything. Just cut that. There should be one here too. So cut this one a little bit higher just in case I need to tighten it. But other than that, that's good to go. Now I can place this in here and oh wait, oh, I gotta take it out because now I'm gonna put this mount on and then I'm gonna put that on and then I can get everything wrapped up all right so the mount is on now you can see a little bit I don't know if you can tell there's some the gaskets did smush a little bit I did use some lock nuts just to uh, be extra precautious so this is on there looking pretty good now these ring clamps are going to go in like that and strap to the pole. Hopefully, I don't, these might be too big. We'll see. I should be able to tighten them down enough. So the last step, wow, this is dirty. And now it doesn't balance that well. The last step to do is to add the sense cap back and put everything in here. So I can put this back on. I got to screw these in. Cool. So that's back in. Now I can add the injector which is going to be this cable right here i should zip tie or i guess i will yeah i guess that would be the best thing to do with all this extra cable because it, it really is ridiculous and i can plug in ethernet which goes here should go there and the USB-C, which goes Come on, there we go. So that's plugged in. Now I can zip tie this up. Might as well just use a zip tie because they're right here. Make everything easier. Plug that in. 
And I could tuck this or try to make it look good, whatever. It doesn't need to look good. It is a uh, function over looks. So that's in there. That's not going to go anywhere. Uh, this connection is solid. I'm not worried at all about any of this failing. The last thing that I do need to do is put this cable, which is the LMR 400 cable, through that hole. All right, this is a little difficult to show, but I finally got the cable in. This is very hard to actually move. So uh, I ended up having to take these top two screws out so that I could lift it up so that I could get the angle right because like I said, I had to flip it because the initial one was supposed to be up here and this one was much lower than the one here because this was supposed to be the Ethernet port. But this is all done as far as the internals. I can actually close this box up and call it a day for everything inside here. Next, I'm going to be changing the antenna pole. So I will be making a video on putting all of this up, but I just wanted to show you guys basically what you need to do to build this. Uh, and then the parts list will be in the description below so you guys can check this out. This is complete. All I have to do is put these on and hook it up to the pole. And then I have to run this ethernet cord to this injector, in which case it actually goes on this side where it says power data out, plugs in here. Then I have another ethernet cable that goes in here along with power and that's going to inject it. That's going to power everything. Then I don't have to worry about having any cables and whatnot sticking out of my house i'm only going to have one cable it's going to be super easy super small i can silicone the hole i can add a drip loop and we can call it there so i'll see you all in the next video when i am installing this thank you guys so much for watching peace out